on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. Don't panic. Despite the problems of withdrawing funds, Bitfinex assures everybody that they are solvent. Dash Detailed is a weekly YouTube show about the privacy-focused digital currency known as Dash. It is hosted by the lovely Amanda B. Johnson and keeps you right up to date about all the exciting developments in the Dash ecosystem. Click the link in the video description and subscribe today. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. Now today is Friday the 21st of April 2017. Can you believe it? Now I have two announcements today. We'll do the market roundup and then we'll do the news. Now I'm pretty much going to bang on about this every day because not everybody watches every single episode. So please go to cryptoversity.com forward slash survey if you would like to submit a question for my next guest, which is Brendan Ike from the Brave Project and the Basic Attention Token Project. This is probably the most anticipated guest for me because I'm a marketeer and I'm so excited about the Basic Attention Token Project. And just roughly, like if you use an ad blocker, imagine if you could turn off the ad blocker and then receive money every time an ad appeared, right? Imagine that. That's pretty much what David, not David, Brendan is going for. I always get confused. Like David Icke is a different guy, isn't he? From Brendan Icke. So Brendan Icke, Mozilla guy, JavaScript guy, now the brave guy, and now the basic attention token guy. So cryptoversity.com forward slash survey. Give me a question that you would like me to ask of him. Make sure it's relevant and then put your name in if you want a shout out. So please do that before next Tuesday. And did I or did I not tell you I was on fire this week? I have added yet another lesson to the Secrets of the Bitcoin Triangle course. You know that course is in early access right now, so everyone who signs up early at a cheaper price is getting it as is, and then every time I add a new lesson, you get it immediately. So this is the third lesson I've added this week. This one is in the savings module. This is like how to save money with Bitcoin. And this one is about Bitcoin savings accounts and how you can earn interest on your Bitcoin savings rather than just having it sit there and go up in value. So if you're already enrolled in this course, get over to your student dashboard, go to the savings module, and this is ready for you. If you're not already enrolled in the secrets of the Bitcoin Triangle course, then what are you doing? Get yourself over to the courses section and enroll today. All righty then, now moving on to the market roundup, courtesy of coinmarketcap.com. Now then, quite a bit of red in the cryptocurrency markets today. However, nothing over 10%, not as I look at it now. Anyway, let's begin with Litecoin is back up 6% at a price of $10.57. And actually, many of you made a point yesterday about Litecoin that the miners may have done the dirty on us. And by that, I mean they would have bought some Litecoin, then started signaling segregated witness support to get it above the activation threshold, that would have got all the markets very excited. Then the price of Litecoin would have shot up as it did. And then those miners would have cashed out when the price went up and then removed the support for segregated witness, right? Now that's plausible because we saw support for SegWit get over 80%. And I was really excited about it. And then Litecoin's price suddenly took a dip, perhaps suggesting that some people had sold at the top. And then right now Litecoin is at 70% miner support. So that's the drop I was talking about. So it's still now, it's under the threshold again. So that's a real shame if that's what's gone down. Anyway, Ethereum Classic takes over Monero today with a 5% gain, up to $3.36 a coin and $305 million of market cap. That's beaten out Monero's market cap of $286 million. Now, if we were talking about the top 20, then we would be talking about Augur taking the biggest beating today overall with a drop of 8.8%, putting it down to $11.27 per coin. Now, Augur is another one of those non-minable currencies. So 
11 million tokens gives it a market cap of 124 million dollars total by contrast if we want some big winners we have to go all the way outside of the top 20 to find digix dow which is up 16.2 percent today and sits at 19 dollars 97 uh, Digix DAO are doing those gold-backed assets on the blockchain thingy, uh, powered by Ethereum, I believe. So they've been around, you know, since the beginning, well, not since the very beginning, but Digix DAO isn't a new project. They've been one of the early movers in this space. And then two spots below that is Singular DTV, which I've spoken about a few times recently. They're now up 10.5% today and sitting at six cents a coin, pretty much. Now, I heard that Singular are continuing to recruit people from Hollywood to help them with their strategy. Given that Singular DTV are like a decentralized TV and entertainment platform, I think it was a producer that they hired recently to, and brought them on as an advisor as like, how do you how do you get content creators, movie creators to give their content to the platform and then distribute it through that platform? So they're really thinking commercial with this. This is good. And you know, I mentioned Round yesterday. Well, it's tanked by 19.5% today, but with only $20,000 of trading volume, it's likely to see swings like that, to be honest. So for the news segment today, I have turned to Crypto Ninjas. Crypto Ninjas, how would that go? Cha-ching, haya, probably, if it had a sound effect. And this is a podcast, so that's the best I can do. Anyway, they've published this article called Bitfinex Update. Quote, Solvent, Asex, assets exceed all user balances and they're looking to get back to normal now this story has actually been running for a few days but i've intentionally not covered it because i didn't want it to be a knee-jerk reaction to be honest a lot of these stories resolve themselves within a couple of days and i don't see the point in bringing what is potentially fear inducing news to your attention unless it's necessary right that's actually my goal for today to boil this down a bit and to bring some clarity to the situation, you know, dial down that fear with a dose of objectivity, which I always find calms the nerves. So let's get into this. It's not a very long article, um, and I'm going to provide most of the insight here. It says, Hong Kong-based crypto exchange Bitfinex today provided an update further to its announcement on the 13th of April and the 17th of April with respect to wire transfer inflows and outflows of customer funds to and from the exchange most importantly being US dollar withdrawals. So this is the original story, right? Bitfinex customers began having trouble withdrawing their US dollar funds from the exchange. That's the kind of thing that kind of triggers people into a fight or flight response because it kind of sets off these alarm bells that the exchange is about to collapse and I'm going to lose all my money, right? Now, however, however irrational you think that is, it is what happens, right? But then it goes on to say here in the orange, Bitfinex said that they continue to experience delays in processing outbound fiat wires. Right there, that's their stated explanation as to why their customers are having trouble with withdrawing their dollars, right? It's because Bitfinex are having trouble with their own wire transfer providers. That means the banks, the people they are banking with. Now, I lean more towards believing this to be true because it's been in the news earlier this week that Wells Fargo were delaying and blocking bank transfers to and from Bitfinex and other exchanges. And at one point, Bitfinex said they were going to file a lawsuit against Wells Fargo, but they later changed their mind because they probably went, well, they realized the chances of winning were slim to none. You know, banks can behave maliciously and then protect themselves by saying something like, well, we were doing additional fraud checks or terrorism checks, right? Those kinds of activities are allowed by any number of laws. So I think Bitfinex knew that they were screwed either way. Anyway, there's a quote here from Bitfinex. It says, quote, We are developing alternative channels to address these delays, but it takes time. We appreciate the patience and loyalty demonstrated by our customers and the community in this matter. We were advised by our banks that we would be able to process outbound wires in Hong Kong dollars and Swiss francs. And while we were able to successfully process several such transactions, we are now being told that the moratorium is being extended to those currencies as well. Close quote. This is the ongoing nightmare that it must be to try and operate a successful exchange that deals with fiat currency. Right, The pure crypto exchanges like Shapeshift and Poloniex, they don't have these kinds of problems because 
the currencies they deal with are permissionless and they don't have gatekeepers that call the shots, right? All the more reason that we should make the extra effort to trade using these peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces like localbitcoins.com and BitSquare. Let's uh, move on here and get another quote from uh, the team at Bitfinex. It says, quote, We want to be absolutely clear here that Bitfinex is solvent. We have assets that exceed all user balances. We also want to emphasize that digital token trading is not affected on Bitfinex. We are developing facilities for different currencies, but in the interim, customers, customers are welcome to trade and to undertake financing on the Bitfinex platform and to deposit and withdraw smoothly using any available uh, any of the available suite of digital tokens, close quote. Yeah, the trouble was though, I read that Bitcoin was trading on Bitfinex for something like $100 above the market rate. That's perfectly logical actually, because if Bitfinex customers thought that the exchange was going to fail, then the US dollars that they had on deposit would be lost. So people would want to turn their dollars into Bitcoin, transfer the Bitcoin to another exchange where they could withdraw their dollars, right? And these are the kind of opportunities where professional traders make money, right, from irrational amateurs, right? The professional traders would sell their Bitcoin at the $100 premium, and then they would just buy them back again once everything had calmed down. Yes, those professional traders are taking on some additional risk, but that's how they earn their living. A professional trader is a professional risk taker. So let me close today by sharing something else that came to my mind when I was researching this particular story. As soon as I started reading suggestions that you know, Bitfinex were having withdrawal problems and that they may be insolvent, I immediately pulled a funny face, right? I, it just didn't make sense to me. I thought, hold on, didn't I just do a story recently where we celebrated the fact that Bitfinex had paid back its customers for the money that it lost in a hack? And didn't we discuss in that very episode how Bitfinex had risen to the challenge and become an even more profitable company because of that adversity. So to go from that position of glory to insolvent in a matter of a couple of weeks, while not impossible, to me was rather improbable. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From just a few dollars a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future, get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, and access a private patrons-only chat group where you get direct access to me. That is all for today, guys. I'll be back on Monday with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.